Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we're going to be working on the Ruby Sampler quilt block and I've got two more blocks to do this time around. I do want to show you guys two blocks that I finished last time. It was whenever I lost all of my video footage so I don't have any footage of me making these blocks but I wanted to show them to you anyways. The first one is this sawtooth square quilt block and it turned out pretty nicely. We did a, I don't remember what this is actually called but we did this block by showing, sewing half square triangles together, cutting it, and then sewing those together to make the actual points of the star, which makes it look really complicated, but it wasn't that bad. The other block that I did is a churn dash block with a nine patch in the center. And this one really turned out nicely. I really feel like that nine patch block just levels up this churn dash. So, points turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it overall. So now let's jump to something that I can show you guys and we'll get started on the next box for our Ruby Sampler quilt. As always, I hope you guys like, subscribe, enjoy the video, leave comments down below, and let me know if you have any thoughts. Let's get to quilting. Okay everyone, so what we've got here is we're going to lay out all of the blocks and squares that I'm going to use for this quilt here. And we've got several pieces, so these are the fabrics that I'm going to use. The first thing that we're going to start doing here is actually doing a flying geese four at a time. And this quilt series has used flying geese a lot, and so I have really been using my wing clipper, which is what I use to sort of make my straight line, and then sew on either side. And then you're going to take your rotary cutter, cut that in half, and you're left with these two pieces. So these are essentially sides of your flying geese here. Then you're going to take those, go ahead and iron them open into little heart shapes, basically is what they kind of look like. And if you can imagine another piece in the center of that heart, at the very base of it, you would be able to see the flying geese there. So that's the next part that we're going to do here is taking another one of our small squares and putting it on there, drawing a center line over the top of it from corner to corner. And then that's going to give us our line to sew a quarter of an inch away. If you're having issues with your flying geese coming out too small, what I would recommend doing would be cutting your fabrics an eighth of an inch larger and then um, doing a scant quarter inch seam across both of those and that way what you end up with is a block that's a little bit bigger and so when you go to cut it down you're gonna find it a lot easier so here again we're going to cut along the line and I've sewed a quarter of an inch across either way and that's gonna give us actually our four flying geese block So we just want to go ahead and iron these open. You also want to be careful when you're ironing these blocks because you don't want to accidentally move that bias edge. And so I like to do a press down to set the seam, a finger press open, and then just set the iron on top of it. If I'm moving the iron, I'm actually picking it up and moving it. It's hard to see on the video that I'm doing that, but you don't want to be moving it across because that's an easy way to distort your block. Now, once you've got all of these done, the next step is to trim these up. And I like to use the wing clipper trimmer, and I'll link that down below for you guys. I've linked it before, but you just line it up. The nice part about the wing clipper is it can do a myriad of blocks from, I believe, up to a five and a half by 10 and a half flying geese block, which is really nice. They A lot of people like to use the block lock rollers, which are nice because they kind of have grooves that set into the seams that you've done, and you get a really nice trim that way, but you have to buy them individually for that, and so the problem that I have with that is that's a lot of rollers to have a stash on, unless you're just usually only sewing one size quilt or one size block, then that's not going to be a big deal because you can just buy one. But what I like about this wing clipper is that I get to do multiple blocks. 
um, with just one ruler, which is really handy. And it's pretty easy to do. So we'll get this last block cleaned up on the edges. It's also nice because it makes really nice clean edges whenever you're able to trim your blocks down. That's another reason why I like to cut all of my blocks a little bit larger, about eighth of an inch larger than what I actually need. So now we have all of our flying geese done and ready to go. And we can then actually start to set out for our first small block. So these kind of make block, these blocks are kind of blocks within blocks. So this is going to be the next part here. So this is making our little sawtooth block. And those make, that's where the flying geese make the points. And then we're going to do the edges here. The one thing I will say with doing a four at a time flying geese block is that you, if you have directional patterns, all of them are not going to be in the same direction. In this case, it worked out because I was able to take the blocks that had gone vertical and line them up, and I was able to take the blocks that had gone horizontal and line those up so that all of my fabric is actually going in the same direction, which ended up looking really nicely. Um, and then on my corner blocks, lining those up so that they were still going in to the right direction. And then we're just going to go through here and do a quarter inch seam or that narrow quarter inch seam. And I like to do my blocks such that I chain sew them and I will then come back and press all of them. And the reason for that is it's just time. It takes a lot less time to go back through, chain sew everything and then come back rather than sew one piece and sew another. Here I'm showing you where I cut my blocks an eighth of an inch bigger and so I try to, when I'm sewing these on there, be consistent about where I'm at. So whenever I go to cut my block, it's consistently bigger on the outside versus the inside. And that's going to make help your blocks look really good too. Now, you could cut your blocks bigger for like the flying geese and then for the blocks that are going to be more center. So the center block that we're not actually sewing, you know, we're just sewing our flying geese too and your corner blocks. You could cut those to size. And I think that that would be fine. But for me, it just gives a little bit more wiggle room to have that little bit of edge to work with. Then whenever I press these blocks, as usual, if you're, if you're new to quilting, then that might be something to think about. But you want your seams to nest together on the back of this block. And so pressing them, either the top ones out and then the center block in, or the other way around, the top ones in and the center block out. Whatever works for you is the way that you're gonna do. I do go ahead and pin my blocks as well. I like to pin them for, for the seams. I find that I get a better seam. I don't get movement like I would get on other ones. Now, you could go through and you could pin on either side and then sew it, but I didn't do that in this instance. So what I'm doing here is I've already sewn the other side. I'm going to now line up my seams here, set my pins in there. I only use pins on the seams. Some people will pin across the whole thing. And if your fabric is a little bit big or you're having a little bit waver, wavy fabric, then it may be good. Other things when you're flying with your, or when you're flying, when you're sewing with your flying geese, you want to watch that that corner piece so that you don't cut the dip off, you know, so the center part of your triangle off. Then we're just going to go ahead and set our seams, finger press it open, and iron over the top. The center seams sometimes are a little bit bulky with flying geese. There's not much that I have found to do. I don't see a difference and some people will iron their blocks open and some people will just iron them in a direction. I do not see a major difference with ironing my blocks open with flying geese versus not. I still feel like there's a decent bulk to that seam. I'm not sure there's a way to really get rid of that. 
um, you can do your best by pressing and making sure your seams are good, but otherwise it's just how it is. So I've now finished the center block here and what we're going to do is, and went ahead and trimmed up the edges as well and cut it to size, which I also like to use the quilts in the day large 12 and a half square up roller to be able to square these up. And again, that allows me to do multiple size blocks up to 12 and a half without having to have one block for every single one or one ruler for every single block. Now what I'm doing here is we're taking all of the rest of the little squares here and doing a center line and we're going to make half square triangles with these. So once I have all of my pieces marked, then I'm going to take them and sew a quarter inch, that narrow quarter inch across both ways. I like to again chain sew those down, so sewing them all in one direction, flip them around, sew back up, and then I don't have to stop and start or potentially lose my thread and re-thread my needle. Then we're just going to go through, cut down that center line that we used. If you're marking those, you just want to be careful if you're using like a water soluble pin. If you put heat to that before you get rid of those, you're going to end up with that line staying. So a lot of times I'll use either just a regular pilot pin, um, not a gel pin, just a ballpoint pin to do that. If, if I'm cutting on the line, I'm usually not as worried about having that ink there or water there, whatever it is you're using. It's not as big of a worry. Now I have to apologize here in that I'm going to do the rest of this block, but I accidentally, um, something happened to the video. So I, what I do for the rest of this block is square up these squares to the size that I want. And then I'm going to take my strip, my white strip that you see right there, and we're going to make those into almost like a churn dash block look to it is, is how it looks. But then what I'm going to take is there are four corner pieces that that, that that white strip and the half square triangle doesn't fit for the block. And those corner pieces are those half square triangles, which is what gives it that, that look at the end of it. You do want to make sure that you take care with your placement of your blocks. And so you see I have those blocks on the edge there, and those are the blocks that are going to be my corner pieces. So I did lose video here, so I apologize for that, but I will show you the block at the end. All right, everybody, that is this block completed for us. It turned out pretty okay. The points a little bit are off, but overall everything turned out good. It was mainly this top part. The rest of the square, so the center block, is spot on perfect. And these sideline blocks are as, are as well, but it was this top block that gave me a little bit of trouble whenever I was doing it. So, But overall, very happy with it. I think it worked out well. And now we're ready to move on to the next block, okay? So, let's jump into that. I've got all the pieces cut already. Here we go. Okay, what we're doing here is setting out all the pieces again so I can just show you all of the fabric that's gonna be used for this block. And there's quite a few different fabrics in this one. I am really most in love with the fabric, it's called potpourri, I believe that has all of the flowers on it. I just think they're really, really beautiful. So starting out again, as I told you before, there are a lot of flying geese in these blocks. Um, in this Across this whole quilt, I feel like I've done a ton of flying geese. And the good part about that is if you're not used to doing those, it's really nice because once you finish a quilt that does a lot of one block, you've really started to be able to achieve that block and do that block in a really nice manner. So again, we're doing the four at a time. You could do these individually if you wanted to, where you cut the pieces and sew one block at a time, but it 
is a lot faster to do it this way. And I find that again, with cutting my fabric an eighth of an inch larger and doing a narrow quarter inch seam, I feel like my flying geese blocks, that has been the best way for me to acquire a really good sized piece block, a block that is actually the size it's supposed to be at the end. But doing whatever works for you. So if you're not good at four at a time, but you like doing them individually, then I would go for that. There's also, I'm sure, another way, I can't think of it right now, of how to do your flying geese. But I think this is one of my favorite ways to do it. So here we are again on the heart shape, placing our bottom square, which is gonna be the other side of our flying geese. And we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam across that, doing that in a chain, chain piecing method on, on our sewing machine. My sewing machine I use is a Brother PQ1500SL, in case you were wondering. Uh, it was a Christmas gift several years ago, so it was quite the upgrade from just my little standard Singer sewing machine. I wanted the sewing machine because I was able to actually do free motion quilting on it before I got my long arm machine. It had a wider throat than my Singer machine. Again, whenever you're back to this, whenever you're ironing, remember you want to try and not distort your blocks. So now we have all four of our blocks. You want to just press, pick up, press, pick up, press, and that will help to not distort the biased edge. And then we're going to go through using the wing clipper and trim these blocks up. Basically, you line it up with the point, uh, the point of the triangle and then and cut and then whenever you flip it around you're able to line it up with the edges of that block. So I've got all four of my flying geese. I'm going to pick those up, set those aside for the moment. The next step is we're going to make that block. So getting my center block going through here and placing my flying geese around it which makes it to have this square in a square and then we're going to take one of my favorite fabrics of the whole quilt and put these corner pieces on there. And I think that just looks really pretty, honestly. I love the way it looks. Now, I don't know that I did the greatest of sewing on this block. I feel like my, uh, my flying geese making that corner in a corner didn't end up as, as nice as I would like. But in the overall grand scheme of things, when people are looking at this quilt, they're not going to, to notice that. Oh, I did have a mess up here. So when I was cutting, my thread in between those blocks, I actually didn't, I accidentally cut the actual fabric. So I did have to un, unstitch this portion here and use my seam ripper and take this block off. I got another piece of the fabric and cut it to size and was able to then put that one on. I did cut this one since I was going ahead and just sew it on there. I cut it to size of what it was supposed to be and didn't go an eighth of an inch larger than, than I was I normally would. So now that we got that on there, we're able to go ahead and sew all of those together and with magic here. Oh yes, that's right. What I wanna do first is you wanna iron those so that you're not sewing together a bunch of lumpy fabric. So uh, again, whenever I am doing this, you wanna be consistent so that it helps you to remember. So, sewing the top and bottom blocks and I am pressing the seams to the outside and on that center block I am pressing the seams to the inside and this is going to help my blocks to nest together better so that hopefully you get a better sew, you get a better seam, you get a, a, a stronger bond as well as your blocks are the size that you want them to be. I really think this block by itself is really pretty. So, I mean, if you were, it's not, it's only, I think it's only eight and a half inch square, so it's not a very big block, but I think it would be a really pretty block just on its own. Like even if you did a whole quilt like that, that sort of square in a square, maybe it's just the fabric. So this time around, what I'm gonna do is sew both sides together in sort of a chain sew fashion, rather than sewing one, coming back over pinning, sewing one, and this just sort of makes it more efficient when I'm at my sewing machine. So now I'm going to go ahead and press this, setting those seams, and we're gonna flip them open and see how good I did. So I feel like 
the bottom one here is not too bad. That left side is probably the best side. The right side, I, I can see a little bit. Um, and then I think this one's the worst side, or maybe not. I, mm, they're not perfect. You know, it's definitely that top left is, is not straight. And I don't think that that lower block is as well. But overall, I think it looks really good. So now we're ready to, after we square this up, we're going to move on and do the next part here of this, which is doing the surrounding, which takes this 8.5 inch square block to a 12.5 inch square block. So I'm just going to trim this up so that I have a, a nice good size block and that my finished block fits with it. And then we'll start on the next part. Okay, so now that we've got that block all squared up, we're ready to move on to the next part, which uh, if you had to guess, I would hope you would guess we're gonna make flying geese because that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be taking this flower block, large block here, and putting the little white blocks on the corner pieces here. Again, we're going to be doing four at a time flying geese. Just, I, I think it's the fastest way to make flying geese and it also seems to be the easiest and with the least amount of waste. So doing as we always do, uh, making a line down the center line and then sewing a scant quarter inch seam on either side of that line and then we're gonna cut down the center line. Once we've made our cut down the center, we'll go ahead and iron these blocks open into what I like to consider the heart shape block. And this is the block that we're then going to use to go ahead and put our last white little block on and sew a quarter inch seam down either side of midline to finally make our four flying geese for this block. So now that we have done that, we'll go ahead and cut down the midline here and you guys will see we have our completed four flying geese blocks and we'll go ahead and iron these up as well and after we've ironed the blocks open, that's whenever we're going to go to trimming them. As you guys know, already have said, I really like the wing clipper trimmer and it works really well. It's a great way to get all of the blocks the correct size that you want with one tool and you can do it in multiple sizes with that. Now we're going to take our center, our center block that we've already completed and go ahead and add to the sides of this. So we're going to take our flying geese block and add two white squares on either side of that and then press those open so that we can then add them to that center block, taking the center block from a square to a rectangle. Now, remember whenever you're pressing these blocks, you wanna be careful. You have a flying geese with that bias edge. It's really easy to distort these. So we want to make more of a pressing down and lifting up motion rather than a sliding motion with the iron. Now that we can completely add these on, I am going to use my pins and we're gonna pin down this line here. I find it very important to pin whenever I have my seams just because it makes them to sit better and I'm not having an issue when I'm sewing them and then going down sewing it and opening it up. I did place more pins on that block than I usually do just because I wanted the white corners to sit nicely. Now we're going to go ahead and iron this block open so that we have our rectangle. And because I cut all of my blocks an eighth of an inch larger than I do than the pattern calls for, what you will notice is that I have a little bit of a ledge on either side of this block. Sometimes I'll just leave this ledge and I will account for that whenever I'm sewing. But in this case, because the block is so long, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just trim that eighth of an inch off and go ahead and, and I'll use my long ruler. I have a Fiskars ruler that I'm gonna place on there, lining up to the edge of that center block and using my, 
my mat to make sure that everything's looking straight there and then cutting along that on either side. And that way, whenever I go to place the top and bottom part of this quilt block, I'm not going to have to worry about, am I actually on the right side whenever I'm quilting this down or am I going to be quilting a little bit too short or a little bit too wide? So now that we have either edge of those, we can use the last of our two flying geese blocks, set those on there, and then we're going to take our white rectangular square blocks to put on either end. Going ahead and sewing those all together, and then we're going to press them open. Again, I found that these were some of the harder blocks to press because of the flying geese and, and the amount of fabric that gets there. I just felt like there was a lot more bunching than I expected there to be. This one also had a little bit of difficulty with in that that narrow quarter inch seam was pretty narrow and the fabric didn't really want to fold over. So I did have to turn it over and kind of really press it to give it that, that extra oomph so that it would lay down nicely. Once we get these two top and bottom lines ironed, we're going to go ahead, lay them next to our block. And I always like to lay my block out and make sure that it is set up right before I start pinning, just because you don't want to have the wrong block in the wrong place and then go ahead and sew it and be stuck with something that just isn't correct. Again, I'm going to place some pins here, and I did end up, I start from the middle of my block of putting those pins in, and then I extend it out this time, just because again, this was a really long block. Now we're going to go through here, and we're going to press this block open, and we are almost finished, guys, with this block, and with this actual month of block of the month kit that we got here. So... Pressing outward, again, I am lifting my iron up as I go and not sliding it along the fabric so that we don't distort any of the fabric. Doing a finger press before I get down there. And then I'm just doing a nice all over. So there are a lot of seams in this block in my opinion. Um, it's what makes it look so intricate and beautiful, but it also can make it a bear to go ahead and square up because those blocks want to hold your ruler up. And now we're going to cut that last little bit and we'll have this block completed. All right, everybody, that is this block finished here. And I love how it turned out. I love the corner pieces and the intricacy. I also, this fabric right here is some of my favorite, favorite fabric of the entire quilt. So I really like seeing this block with all of that on there. And it looks really intricate, but as you guys saw, it was really not that difficult to put together. A lot of flying geese, which has been a common theme in this entire quilt series, but I really love how it looks and I love that it is almost on point, which is nice. You know, that makes it look to me a little bit more intricate. The other block that I completed, and I apologize for the filming issues with it, but was this block as well. And the one thing that you guys did not see was I completed these three blocks right here, sewed those together and made a total of four of them going all the way around the quilt and sewed one to either side of the quilt and then across the top and the bottom added an extra corner block here which gave this really cool sort of almost like a flying geese pattern. Um, I'm sure that there is a, I'm sure there's a quilt name for that but I don't know it but it looks to me almost 
it gives a churn dash style quilt feel, quilt block feel to me, but it's not with the star. So I just find it a really neat block. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I know that we're moving through this. I think I've only got a few left. Um, let me know if you guys are enjoying this new style of filming. If you like me going through it a little bit more slower and showing you what I'm doing, or if you would rather just have the sort of fast go through of the entire uh, quilt block and sort of just me piecing it together with no information um, and no background talking as well. So I'm happy to do either way. Certainly this way does take a little bit more time, which is why I've been a little bit late in putting out the film or this video, but I hope that you guys really enjoy it. And as always, don't forget to give me a like, a thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below, do all of those things. And we'll see you next time on The Little Quilter. Have a great day. Thanks guys.